I wear a hat. Richard wears a hat. And James... Oh, God. Think of Dark Souls, think of the cover art of the entire series, and you were thinking about the Honourable Knight. I, meanwhile, beg to differ. It's the standard build in any Souls titles. It's a sensible choice for any challenge. It's the most boring build you can ever choose. I, on the other hand, have chosen the quick and nimble Archer. You literally move the same speed as us. Well, mine has better range than Jeremy and does physical damage just like you. Yes, but Hammond, you deal quarter of the damage, which is why no one builds around a bow. After arguing over who had the worst build, we received our challenge. You will now each go to a DLC area and get the respected crown. Oh, for Christ's sake. I will be tasked with the crown of the Ivory King. Well, that's one place with high magic resistance. Well, Richard, you will be tasked with getting the crown of the Sunken King. Which is not going to be a problem. So I go get the crown of the old Iron King? That's easy. Wait, there's more. You are each only allowed to kill one boss. What? That's rubbish. Getting to the DLC alone would take, like, five. To help with this challenge, you will first be tasked to get 30,000 souls. After that, return to Mojo. What's 30,000 going to do? Maybe with a million, you could skip the Shrine of Winter, but not 30. Are they serious about killing only one boss? With that terrible disappointment, we each set off to get our 30,000 quid. Except for James, who was having trouble talking to the maiden. Be gone, wench. Here we are at the Forest of Fallen Giants. It doesn't have 30,000 souls, not even close. However, the Shaded Woods next door does, and the key to that area is right over there. Oh, for sake. Now, what that absolute pillock forgot is that you need at least 1,000 health to survive that fall. The Honourable Knight, which is the best class in the game, starts with almost that. And with the right rings, you can easily get that up to 1,000. I, on the other hand, had an ingenious idea. The forest isn't the only place with a fragrant branch of yore. Now, normally, you'll need a lot of health to survive this fall, but with a little help... No! Watch it! Whoa! After that, it was a straightforward trip down to Graves of Saints, the gutter. get the fragrant branch of your. After resorting to manual labor, I too had enough health to make the jump. Holy mother of God, that was close. Many poos shot out of my eye. <laughs> now that all three of us had the necessary item, it was time to visit the shaded woods. <coughs> Do you have any clothing that you could spare? The shaded woods has more than 35,000 souls in the area. Also, it has the best ring in the game that gives you stamina regeneration. There is also a ring that gives you more spell cast speed, but we won't need that because that's stupid. Yes, yes, very funny, James. After picking up all the souls in the area, we were ready to return to Majula. I still have no idea how this 30,000 souls is going to help us. I too had no idea until we received our next letter. Now that you have 30,000 souls, you will each buy a vehicle to help with the challenge. There isn't any vehicles in this place. As it turned out, we were wrong. From the dawn of humanity, mankind has looked upon the stars. There has been many records, ancient designs on various contraptions, Descriptions on animals that can help achieve flight. These designs were lost in time. Some even consider them to have been nothing more than a myth until now. Welcome, everyone, to the... James. What? 
Why aren't you wearing yours? It looks ghastly and unbefitting of an honourable knight. It's the pinnacle of modern personal vehicle. To be fair, Jeremy, you do look like an orangutan with butterfly wings. <laughs> you say that, but watch this. The wings allow you to jump higher and farther than ever intended, which means the entire world is now your oyster. Take, for example, the Shrine of Winter. It's the only thing blocking you from Ilium Lois. You would normally open this by killing four great lords or get a million souls, but what if you can jump up and around? The timing is quite tricky. You have to enable auto run and use the mouse to equip the wings right before the jump. Stupidest idea in history. After seeing Clarkson's impressive jump, I decided to swallow my pride and try the butterfly set for myself. Oh, but because of the absolutely horrendous fashion, the residents of Majula refused to talk and soon became violent. One other use for the butterfly set is that you can jump immediately without running. Now, this may not seem that impressive until you realize you can use this to cancel the animation of, let's say, a critical attack. As you can imagine, there are numerous applications for this, and right now I'm trying to find my way to Huntsman's Corpse. The critical attack locks your Z coordinates and allows you to walk in mid-air. However, the effect only lasts around 30 seconds. Cock. We need as much stamina regeneration as we can get. So I've removed every equipment except for the shield and skirt and equipped at the grass crest ring for more regen as well. And by carefully navigating using distant landmarks, I was able to reach the Huntsman's Corpse. And once we're here, we can do the same thing with the NPC invader and skip the skeleton lords as well. This time, our path leads to the raised bridge that connects to Harvest Valley. And after falling down from the bridge, we have skipped the skeleton lords. It's an ingenious solution to a problem that should have never existed. Meanwhile, I was back underground. I first do some pest control around the first floor. What could possibly go wrong? As it turned out, there were more rats than arrows. But not to worry, there is a solution for this. After cleaning out the first floor, I met with Roy, a local streaker, who was kind enough to assume the position. Besides letting you fly, the party walk has a bit of a strange interaction. With ladders. By running into the wall for a few seconds, you can store enough momentum, and grabbing the ladder releases that momentum, letting you pass through solid objects. That's all good, but you still only have 30 seconds, and I have absolutely no idea where I am. So why are we here in the first place? Well, we need to get a key to enter the DLC. The normal way of getting the key would be to go under Black Gulch, kill the giant somehow, fall down the pit again and open a stone door. But we can skip all that. And with a bit of navigation, I was able to get the key within 30 seconds. Being able to store momentum means you can climb up slopes that are previously impossible. The 30-second window is just barely enough to reach the entrance to Drangliak Castle. Imagine having to get a million souls. That would have been a nightmare. Right, Zero Boss is killed. Let's go to the DLC. Well, there seems to be a slight problem. Getting a million souls isn't actually that hard. You can kill something like the Rotten over and over for it. Problem is, doing it without killing a boss. The most amount of souls you can get at this stage of the game is the giant under Black Gulch, which calculates to around 162 times. You'll need a dedicated poison setup and go in Covenant of Champions, which is rubbish. I have a better plan. The plan is quite simple. Instead of barbarically executing things over and over, skip to the end of the game and pick up some soul items. No enemies, no fuss. But for this to work, we need some help. Yes, you'll work quite nicely. Now, if you'll follow me to the launch site. 
As long as you can parry and repost, this will work with any enemy. So here's a Top Gear top tip. Next time you get invaded, do this. Note that this will only work with bosses with an open path. So if there are any walls between you and the exit, tough luck. The specific soul that we're looking for is the soul of a great hero, which amounts to around 20,000. Holy moly! Using the soul, we make a quick stop at Forest of Fallen Giants and buy a fragrant branch of yore. So, why did we do all that just to spend it on a fragrant branch? You see, uh, the Dragon Airy is the only place besides Medulla where you can burn an ascetic without killing a boss, which means you can respawn all the items in the area infinitely. Sometimes my genius is... it's almost frightening. While Jeremy was busy farming a million souls, parry walks can do many things, but it doesn't let you pass through solid objects. Unless that object is a petrified statue, then yes, you can. No idea why. After unlocking a bonfire next to the rock, I started preparing for the rotten skip. Turns out the trick with the ladder works with fog gates as well. But there are three things you have to remember. First, this only works for bosses that have cutscenes. No idea why. Second, you need to build enough speed and have the right angle to clip through the fog gate on the other side. Being off by even a few degrees will cause a massive difference in where you end up. <laughs> Lastly, you need to run after clipping through. If you don't do this, then the cutscene will play out and you'll be teleported into the room. Again, no idea why. Because of this, it is highly recommended that you back up your set. <laughs> Women. I believe Hammond has demonstrated the boss skip. But what happens if you try the same thing with a boss without a cutscene? Well, that's disappointing. Well, this is because uh, I have no idea. However, if you angle yourself just right and roll out at the last minute, this happens. For the last few minutes, there has been a desert sorceress that's been throwing fireballs in the background. Now, complete silence. Triggering the boss but leaving the room has caused every single enemy to despawn. This is, of course, understandable, as it would save performance, among other things. What I don't get is why the boss health bar remains after sitting at a bonfire. To investigate this further, I decided to give the covetous demon another visit. What? So the little trick with clipping the fog gate and resting at a bonfire seemed to freeze the AI, which is similar to how a boss with a cutscene would act before entering the fog gate. This gave me an idea. Somehow, activating the boss before doing the glitch seemed to have worked. Still absolutely no idea why. No matter. Now we have a method of skipping bosses without cutscenes. So this works for any boss as long as the fog gate on the other side is in a good location.
The Iron Keep is a bit of a problem, because first, there isn't any parryable enemies near the Fog Gate. And besides, even if you could, the Fog Gate on the other side is in a very unfortunate location. Before skipping the boss, we first go back to Forest of Fallen Giants. The Honourable Knight does not care for things like gravity. The keen among you might have noticed that there isn't any roof on the boss room. So naturally, our next move is to fly above the entire area. Bollocks. The developers, in their infinite wisdom, has decided to surround the entire area with an invisible wall. But what's interesting is that we can gain just a bit of height using the rails to fly over and entirely circumvent this. Meanwhile, I was... Jeremy. I'm in the middle of something here. I really hate to ask this, but can I borrow one of your rings? Okay, you seem to be pretty busy, so I'll leave you with that. After popping a million souls, I was finally able to reach a Liam Lois. While Jeremy was busy farming a million souls, I've arrived at the sunken city. It is genius. This time, once and for all, I am going to win. I shall be victorious. We first head down the winding streets to get an upgraded longbow, one of the many perks of the sunken city. Most of the puzzles are solved with bows, so it's only natural that they have one of these lying around. Next, we solve some puzzles and head deep into the sanctum, where we get a ring that boosts physical damage. After getting all the items I was confident about facing the boss. Now the damage is pretty low, but I can dodge all of her attacks with my long range and nimble movement. This should be easy enough. Oh. This was a mistake. <laughs> What's he done? <laughs> I can't. I, on the other hand, was marvelling at the beauty of Broom Tower. The Broom Tower is said to be the industrial powerhouse of the entire kingdom. And because of this, it has the most amount of upgraded weapons, more than Richards and Jeremy's combined. First, the dexterity ring which will allow us to use most of these weapons. Like the Bardiche, which we can get right after... A, a scythe? Which of you imbeciles named this thing? I should find your house and burn it down. But what I was truly looking for was this. It is fast, it is light, and it deals strike damage. Turns out the Cestus relied heavily on scaling rather than base damage. Well, that's disappointing. I was talking to Richard earlier and saw his impressive ladder trick, and that got me thinking. Notice that I've parried the enemy below the starting point of the ladder. And since my Z-coordinate is locked, I'm technically supposed to be under the ladder, which does this. Because the animation is disjointed from the ladder itself, there is nothing preventing me from going down infinitely. And unlike most tricks involving parries, this one is not limited to 30 seconds. After arriving at my final boss, I made quick work of him using honest skill and labour.
In my haste to reach the fume night, I have neglected the most important element, common sense. Oh, ho, ho. That's nippy. You approaching me. What? The old chaos hungers still. Well, that's not very nice. Piss off. Get him up. Clarkson, you infantile pillock. How are you seeing the boss without the eye? I promise you this is an honest mistake. Didn't update the mod before this. After that unfortunate encounter, we go down in search of the eye. Right. Fortunately, the tried and true run past everything tactic worked flawlessly. Now that James won't accuse me of cheating, it was time to put down the cat. Which was easier said than done. Well, we obviously need better spells, so let's go back and level up. I just lost, like, a million souls. How much did you lose? Like I said, one million and three hundred fifty souls. <laughs> Meanwhile, I had a totally original, ingenious idea. The sunken city isn't as vertical as a certain tower, and there isn't any ladders directly above Alana, so we'll have to get creative. The closest ladder to the arena is located just before the Cave of the Dead. Well, when I say closest, it's still a couple dozen meters away from Alana's arena. In order to make up for the difference, we'll have to combine everything we've learned so far. Instead of grabbing the ladder immediately, stand next to the ladder and build momentum. The momentum propels us forward before the ladder animation kicks in, which means we can not only go down infinitely, but also place said ladder in any location. I uh, think I'm stuck. The next move is obvious. We pick up a pristine joint in the forest for more stamina and then strip down to get maximum regeneration. The ladder might be infinite, but storing momentum only lasts 30 seconds. So we have to grab the ladder at the very last second. With Alana out of the way, there was only one last thing to do. I forgot to bring arrows, didn't I? Still, could be worse. The biggest issue by far was the regeneration. 
So yet again, we have no choice but to swallow our pride and stick our rod in the Ashen statue. Uh, is what a coward would say. The Ashen Wench seeks to destroy all that we hold dear and assimilate us into itself. And I say to thee, this shall not come to pass. We shall not fall. James, you feeling all right, mate? Executor, I stand ready. He's completely gone off his rocker. Yeah, I think the fume night finally broke him. Then let our actions speak for us. I'm moving it on. James has plainly gone quite mad. James might have all the weapons, but Eliam Lois has some of the highest stat boosting gears, which will be essential to make up for the lost million soul. The rest, however, is behind ice. Quite literally, in fact. Can't parry those popsicles safely while the mage is shooting, but there is a solution. The path opens up to one of the knights of Elium Lois. More importantly, right behind the knight is a doorway to the cathedral, and a quick force quit lets us bypass the fog gate caused by the invader and leads us straight to Alsana. Ava, you idiot. You let through a naked old man. Yes, he's standing right in front of me. What do you mean you saw nothing? I hate to interrupt, but can you please unfreeze this entire place? Fine, feel free to go off and die in a ditch somewhere. And for skipping the boss, we are rewarded with the best shield in the entirety of Dranglick. There's only one thing left to do. Rescue the two knights and get the crown. The path to these knights can be a bit problematic, but there's a fix for that. After thinking about it, there's only two issues. Our damage sucks, and each attempt uses a lot of arrows. So that got me thinking. How do we solve those two at the same time? The Sanctum Crossbow is equipped with a weapon art that can shoot dark orbs without using arrows, which solves our logistics issue. But what about the damage, you might ask? Well, watch this. That was a plus zero crossbow, and we can get it much, much higher with upgrades. Naturally, I headed back to Majula for a quick upgrade. Where'd the blacksmith go? Whoa! After the blacksmith's mysterious disappearance, I sought out to seek another. Fortunately, there are two more blacksmiths I can choose from. Problem is, both of them are behind multiple bosses. I chose to head to Macduff's workshop, since he also offered infusions. Macduff is after the last giant and the pursuer, which you think might be a problem, but it really isn't. And after that, a classic parry walk is used to fly over pursuer's arena. Arriving at Lost Bastille, getting to Macduff was a simple task of blowing up a wall. the newfound damage, I was able to finish the challenge and get the crown. Well, this is quite unfortunate.
Hey, Jeremy. I'm in the middle of something here. I really hate to ask this, but can I borrow one of your rings? Okay, you seem to be pretty busy, so I'll leave you with that. Right after crossing the entrance, we meet with Chancellor Wellager, who sold a ring that improves durability and, more importantly, unlimited repair powders. A single repair powder recovers 30 durability, which means with the ring you can shoot four times for every one of these. To maximize our damage per shot, we gather six shards, six large shards, six chunks and a slab to upgrade the bow to plus 10. Finally, after upgrading our crossbow, we take a quick trip to Jeremy's place to pick up a special ring. The ring will boost any dark damage at the cost of taking more damage yourself. At this point, the damage is more than enough to take on Sin. The dark ring is probably overkill. But if you want the best bow build ever made, there is one last trick. Unlike a certain blithering oaf, we have enough intelligence and faith to interact with Felkin in a civilized manner. I see a dark spark within you. These are for you. After buying the Hex Dark Weapon, we store all our weapons, except for the bow, a staff, and a buffable weapon. Have enough stats to one-hand the crossbow and to cast Dark Weapon. While walking, Roll, cast, and swap the weapon to the crossbow. Since the boss doesn't wake up until you're close, you can try it until you get it. And with all the setup finished, it is time to say farewell to this challenge. So what you've done, Richard, is you've basically made a hex build that shoots repair powders. Plus, you needed a million souls to make it happen. Yes, because unlike you, Jeremy, I didn't have a brain fart and lose my million souls. It was an educational demonstration that a proper mage can be built economically. Oh, was it? You sounded pretty miserable about it. Anyway, listen, let's not get bogged down with your prejudices, because... It is now time to show what it takes to build a proper mage. Yes. Bring me a ladder miniature as proof. Gilligan is the only person who'd have such an odd knick-knack. <laughs> they say that great power comes at a sacrifice. Following this golden rule, I decided to sacrifice willing subjects for the greater good. For certain, I have always been very fond of maps. I don't know who you are, but, but leave me be. The frailty of the wind disrupts the dark. Why would you kill them? 
you were all creepy and mysterious, so I assumed I had to. What is wrong with you? Please don't hurt me. Anyways, let's not bicker and argue about who killed who. Time to put this baby to the test. What you'll expect me to do is to go down to the gutter and get the dark pyro flame. What I'm instead going to do, which I'm probably going to regret, is this. I've invented swimming! This totally safe and ingenious idea have saved countless seconds on the run. Next, we simply use our long-range magic to ring the bell. Well, that was my last arrow. It's a real shame because this massacre would have totally been unnecessary had we been doing this in anywhere else. Because Dranglick is the only place where quitting out does not reset the enemy's position. After activating the boss and resting at the bonfire, we repeat the process. Just one short. I'm always here. So come and see me when you're in town. Sure, I can skip another boss to get it, but there's no need to, because there's one right in front of me. Ouch. 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 Oh shit, I forgot this place was New Game Plus. Where the fuck is this? After upgrading our flame with Carillion, we make some final preparations to face the Ivory King. One? You only get one cast and that's it? This is actually worse than Richard's. I'll have to eat a herb or something every single time I cast. First we get a spell with a lot of casts. Soul Arrow is perfect for this. Next we attune Forbidden Sun and warp out using the mouse. And while we warp, right click, go back and move the mouse over the Soul Arrow. After the loading screen shows up, click. Moreover, we can attune even more Soul Arrows to boost the number of casts. As you can see, Richard, the proper mage, doesn't have to reload every four casts. Well, I have to admit, 120 Forbidden Sons is quite impressive. So, we both killed a single boss, but mine didn't need a million souls and is definitely more stylish. Well, hang on a minute. That wasn't in the rules. Fine. At least we can all agree on who's last. He's still on it, isn't he? Hi. 
What are you doing here? Instead of using underhanded tricks like you two, I instead used my knowledge of watching years of Varty Video. Who the hell is Varty Video? So you're saying that you killed the Fume Knight with no upgrades, no Estus, and no level ups. And with all four statues on? It's time you two uneducated Philistines learned a lesson in the laws of Drangling. So what's interesting is that- I'm literally falling asleep right now. Fine. Richard, you killed a dragon to get your crown, right? Yeah, the dragon probably ate him or something. And Jeremy, you killed the king himself for yours, correct? Yes. What are you getting at here? Well, the Fume Knight is neither the king nor the one that killed the king. The king was actually long dead before the Fume Knight got to Broom Tower. What he found instead was the ashen wench, Nadalia. Instead of killing the demon as he should have, the Fume Knight instead gave his sword to her. In short, he is what is called a simp. After getting on the roof, it's a simple task of rolling down the sides and hope you clip in time. You will die if you don't get inside within 10 seconds. Hang on a minute, this can't be right. I'm afraid he's right, James. Neither of us can skip killing that last boss. Oh, you could say you two had a major, what's the word? A skill issue. What? 1v1, iron keep, right now. Make that a 2v1. I'm very sorry, fellas, but the honorable knight does not care about the lowly opinions of loser peasants. An honorable knight? Didn't you kill the Emerald Herald just because she's a woman? That was an honorable act to show And with that, that don't... terrible disappointment. Back to the studio. Gear. I drive a silent electric car, Hammond uses a toilet, and James commits arson. Warning, show budget does not exceed 23 yen. Oi, love, posh dickhead have come back, give me a ciggy in it, cheese off blood. Daft bollocks, fish and chips, a bloody bloody arse. Good evening, ladies and gents. Today's sponsor, MSI Colgate B450. Check them out, promo code, revving my wife, Tonoit. Eric. 